Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome to another Gen 2 in Review. Yesterday, I got back from a tough week at work, and I thought, what's more relaxing than doing a world update in Gen 2? Let's do this. So, I updated my portage tree. I ran my little eMerge. Now, I decided instead of using AV... U, capital N, capital D, world. I'll just do the A-U-N-D. And it removes the verboseness of it. I've found that sometimes it's helpful if you need to worry about your use flags to use the V, but uh, otherwise it's, it's a little bit cleaner when looking at what needs to be done. Now when I did that, I ran into some things that kind of bothered me. For instance, we're going to look here at what I have. And I thought, oh wow, it's not going to be that bad. You know, just a few things with Perl. And GCC looks like it's getting updated. And my WeChat's getting updated. The Ruby's getting updated. So, and there's some other things down there. That's all. And you'll see, too, you know, I'm running i3. But I still have KDE installed in the background. And I'm not ready to completely delete it just yet. Because there's there have actually been a few times when I needed to go back in just to check a thing or two. So it still sits there. So there's some applications that, of course, are getting updated. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, this isn't so bad at all. It looks good. And then I get to the, a few things down below. And it's like, Lib Kippy has some problems. And this has some problems. And, all right, well, I can fix that Lib Kippy issue. That's not an issue. But then we look at Perl. Perl has been upgraded. And if we look at this... It's saying, for instance, Perl 5.22.3 is installed and pulled in by common sense. That makes sense. And it goes on to say that it's also being pulled in by Digest and 90 others with the same problem with a different version. We also have the same issue with 5.24 because it's being required by Storable and 26 others with the same problem. And there's a lot of problems here. And I'm going, okay. Well, I started trying to figure out how I could repair this. And I ran through a lot of different scenarios. And when, when something like this happens, I'll open up another tab. And I'll start trying to go through this. Now, in the past, I have run into these. And I have fixed them manually. And I have now suddenly realized the errors of my ways. There have been a few times when people have asked me, do you ever use the option when emerging dash dash with dash bdeps equals y? And I'll be honest, in the past I really have not and I didn't really know what it could do or how it could help. So in this case, I decided I'd look at it a little bit closer because I thought, well, this has to do with some dependencies. Let's see what can happen. Now, some might say, what exactly does with bdeps equal y do? Or what does it do? And the thing is, when you build, it doesn't look at anything that was done at build time for dependencies. And it says right here, for instance, that... If you would like to include such build time dependencies, even though they're not strictly required, use the dash dash wish dash bdeps equals y. You can even set this as a default option. And after what I found with this issue with Perl, uh, that might be a wise thing, and I may go ahead and do that in my emerge default options, because it did fix my issues here. For instance, you saw all those errors up above here that we had. And now, if we see at the next line here, emerge dash AUND at world with bdeps equals y. Uh, let's see. Did I? Oh, that's right. I did it wrong there the first time I typed it in. I'm sorry. I'm going through all my history, and I want to make sure you guys could see this. Emerge dash AUND, capital N, capital D for new use, uh, deep. And, of course, A for ask, because you always wanted to ask before it goes through. Because you never know when something's going to start pulling and a whole bunch of stuff you didn't want. It's always good to have it just kind of do that, unless you know exactly what it's going to do. You, of course, for update. At world dash dash with 
dash b depths equals y, and you will see that also another node, for instance, here there aren't that many packages that it pulled in, you know, just a couple pages, that's it. Then we do it the right way with the b depths, and suddenly it's pulling in all of these Perl packages, updating some, reinstalling others, it's updating all the other packages, reinstalling, and now we're past that, we're into here. Now it talks about this. Now never be afraid when it says stuff like this. The following packages are causing rebuilds. The reason why those are being called rebuilds is because it's going to update Perl to 5.2, 4.1, and all of these Perl packages, because we use the with bdeps option equals y, are now being looked at to be rebuilt against the new version of Perl. And that is a very good thing, because before it didn't know to even pay attention to those. It just knew that there was going to be a huge conflict with that. And so, because it did all that, it's pulling in all of this. And it went from like 30 or 40 packages to 186 packages, I believe, including, of course, those others that just needed to be done. But once it, oh, there it goes, 186, and it started to go through all of that. And to keep a long story short, or a short story long, however you look at my videos, <laughs> everything went well, everything was perfect, it completed all of its problems, it figured it out, and it solved the issue. Now in the beginning, I was scratching my head going, oh my goodness, how am I going to fix 90 something dependency issues? Oh my goodness, how am I going to repair this? Do I have to? In the past, what I would do is... I would kind of do a remove and re-add after I updated the package so it would kind of force all that and that's a lot of hard work and suddenly I realized with this simple dash dash with dash b depths equals y all that kind of resolved itself and fixed itself so a very handy utility feature option to remember to use within a portage update. I wanted to talk about that because I know a few people in the past who have asked me about it and honestly I, just, I can't believe that it's finally come up 15, 14, 15 years after I started using Gen 2. I've just never, I mean, I've used it off and on just to see if it made a difference and it never seemed to make a difference. Now I know, now I know how this can really help out greatly if you run into package conflicts such as this Perl update that recently occurred. Believe me, you don't want to be going through over a hundred and some odd packages just trying to get the rebuild to occur. So, very handy utility. And as you see, I'm still an i3. I'm still loving it. It's really great. It, it, it just feels so speedy and I'm not really missing KDE too much. So the next time I have to update my hard drive or rebuild a system, I may just stick with i3. And believe me, that will fix the install time a lot. A lot less to install and compile with i3. So if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. I hope this helps somebody out there. Um, if you like, Throw it into your make.conf as it says right here. I will leave a link to this page where I found the little Gen 2 frequently asked questions that talk about the BDEPs in the description below. And have a good one. Bye, guys.